Chapter 8 The Spoils of War In the name of Allah, the Most Gracious, the Most Merciful They ask you, O Muhammad, about the spoils of war. Say, The spoils are for Allah and the Messenger. So fear Allah and adjust all matters of difference among you, and obey Allah and His Messenger Muhammad, if you are believers. The believers are only those who, when Allah is mentioned, feel fear in their hearts. When His verses are recited to them, they increase in their faith, and they put their trust in their Lord alone, who perform prayer and spend out of that we have provided them. It is they who are the believers in truth. For them are varying grades of dignity with their Lord, and forgiveness and a generous provision, paradise. And your Lord caused you, O Muhammad, to go out from your home with the truth. And indeed, a party among the believers disliked it, disputing with you concerning the truth after it was made manifest to them, as if they were being driven to death while they were looking at it. And remember when Allah promised you Muslims, one of the two parties, that it should be yours. You wish that the one not armed should be yours. But Allah willed to justify the truth by His words, and to cut off the roots of the disbelievers, that He might cause the truth to triumph and bring falsehood to nothing, even though the disbelievers, polytheists, sinners, criminals, hate it. Remember when you sought the help of your Lord, and He answered you, saying, I will help you with a thousand angels, each behind the other, following one another in succession. Allah made it only as glad tidings, so that your hearts be at rest with it. And there is no victory except from Allah. Indeed, Allah is almighty, all-wise. Remember when He covered you with slumber as a security from Him, and He caused rain to descend upon you from the sky to cleanse you and to remove from you the whispering and evil suggestions of Satan, and to strengthen your hearts and make your feet firm. Remember when your Lord inspired the angels, Indeed, I am with you, so keep firm those who have believed. I will cast terror into the hearts of those who have disbelieved. So strike them over the necks, and smite over all their fingers and toes. This is because they defied and disobeyed Allah and His Messenger. And whoever defies and disobeys Allah and His Messenger, then indeed Allah is severe in punishment. This is the torment. So taste it. And surely for the disbelievers is the torment of the fire. O you who believe, when you meet those who disbelieve in a battlefield, never turn your backs to them. And whoever turns his back to them on such a day, unless it be a stratagem of war, or to retreat to a troop of his own, he indeed has drawn upon himself wrath from Allah, and his abode is hell, and worst indeed is that destination. You killed them not, but Allah killed them. And you, O Muhammad, did not throw when you threw, but Allah threw, that he might test the believers by a fair trial from him. Indeed, Allah is all-hearer, all-knower. This is a fact. And surely Allah weakens the deceitful plots of the disbelievers. O oh, disbelievers, if you ask for a judgment, now has the judgment come to you, and if you cease to do wrong, it will be better for you. And if you return to the attack, so shall we return, and your forces will be of no avail to you, however numerous they may be, and indeed Allah is with the believers. O oh, you who believe! Obey Allah and His Messenger, and do not turn away from the Messenger Muhammad while you are hearing him. And be not like those who say, We have heard, but they hear not. Indeed, the worst of the living creatures with Allah are the deaf and the dumb, those who understand not, the disbelievers. Had Allah known of any good in them, He would indeed have made them listen, and even if He had made them listen, they would but have turned away a verse to the truth. O oh, you who believe, answer Allah by obeying Him and His Messenger when He calls you to that which will give you life, and know that Allah comes in between a person and his heart. And indeed to Him you shall all be gathered. And fear the affliction and trial, which affects not in particular only those of you who do wrong, 
and know that Allah is severe in punishment. And remember when you were few, and were reckoned weak in the land, and were afraid that men might kidnap you. But he provided a safe haven for you, strengthened you with his help, and provided you with good things so that you might be grateful. O oh, you who believe, do not betray Allah and his messenger, nor betray knowingly the things entrusted to you, and all the duties which Allah has ordained for you. And know that your possessions and your children are but a trial, and that surely with Allah is a mighty reward. O oh, you who believe, if you obey and fear Allah, He will grant you a criterion to judge between right and wrong, making a way for you to get out from every difficulty, and will expiate for you your sins and forgive you. And Allah is the owner of the great bounty. And remember when the disbelievers plotted against you, O Muhammad, to imprison you or to kill you or to get you out from your home Mecca. They were planning, and Allah too was planning. And Allah is the best of planners. And when our verses of the Quran are recited to them, they say, We have heard this, the Quran. If we wish, we could say the like of this. This is nothing but tales of the ancients. And remember when they said, O oh Allah, if this Quran is indeed the truth revealed from you, then rain down stones on us from the sky, or bring on us a painful torment. And Allah would not punish them while you, O Muhammad, are amongst them, nor will He punish them while they seek Allah's forgiveness. And why should Allah not punish them when they stop men from entering the sacred mosque, even though they are not its guardians? None can be its guardian except the pious, but most of them know not. Their prayer at the house of Allah, the sacred house at Mecca, was nothing but whistling and the clapping of hands. Therefore, taste the punishment, because you used to disbelieve. Indeed, those who disbelieve spend their wealth to hinder men from the path of Allah, and so will they continue to spend it. But in the end, it will become an anguish for them. Then they will be overcome. And those who disbelieve will be gathered to hell, in order that Allah may distinguish the wicked disbelievers, polytheists, and doers of evil deeds from the good believers of Islamic monotheism and doers of righteous deeds, and put the wicked disbelievers, polytheists, and doers of evil deeds one on another, heap them together, and cast them into hell. It is they who are the losers. Say to those who have disbelieved, if they cease from disbelief, their past will be forgiven. But if they return to it, then the examples of those punished before them have already come as a warning. And fight them until there is no more disbelief and polytheism, and so that all religion will be for Allah alone. But if they cease from worshipping others besides Allah, then certainly Allah is all seer of what they do. And if they turn away, then know that Allah is your Lord, protector, and supporter. What an excellent Lord, protector, and supporter, and what an excellent helper! And know that whatever of war booty that you may gain, indeed one-fifth of it is assigned to Allah and to the Messenger, and to the near relatives of the Messenger Muhammad, and also the orphans, the poor, and the wayfarer. If you have believed in Allah, and in that which we sent down to our slave Muhammad on the day of criterion between right and wrong, the day when the two forces met at the battle of Badr, and Allah is able to do all things. And remember when you, the Muslim army, were on the near side of the valley, and they were on the farther side, and the caravan was below you. Even if you had made a mutual appointment to meet, you would certainly have failed in the appointment. But you meant that Allah might accomplish a matter already ordained in His knowledge, so that those who were to be destroyed for their rejecting the faith might be destroyed after a clear evidence, and those who were to live might live after a clear evidence. And surely Allah is all-hearer, all-knower. And remember when Allah showed them to you as only few in your dream, O Muhammad. If He had shown them to you as many, you would surely have been discouraged, and you would surely have disputed in making a decision. But Allah saved you, 
Certainly he is the all-knower of what is in your hearts. And remember when you met the army of the disbelievers on the day of the battle of Buddha. He showed them to you as few in your eyes, and he made you appear as few in their eyes, so that Allah might accomplish a matter already ordained in his knowledge, and to Allah return all matters for decision. O oh, you who believe, when you meet an enemy force, take a firm stand against them, and remember the name of Allah much, both with your tongues and in your minds, so that you may be successful. And obey Allah and his messenger, and do not dispute with one another, lest you lose courage and your strength depart. And be patient. Surely Allah is with those who are patient. And be not like those who come out of their homes boastfully to be seen of other men, and hinder men from the path of Allah. And Allah is all encircling and thoroughly comprehending all that they do. And remember when Satan made their evil deeds seem fair to them and said, No one of mankind can overcome you this day of the battle of Buddha, and indeed I am your neighbor for each and every help. But when the two forces came in sight of each other, he ran away and said, Indeed, I have nothing to do with you. Indeed, I see what you do not see. Indeed, I fear Allah, for Allah is severe in punishment. When the hypocrites and those in whose hearts was a disease of disbelief said, These people, Muslims, are deceived by their religion. But whoever puts his trust in Allah, then surely Allah is almighty, all-wise. And if you could but see when the angels take away the souls of those who disbelieve at death, they smite their faces and their backs, saying, Taste the punishment of the blazing fire. This is because of that which your hands have done. And indeed, Allah is not unjust to his slaves. Their behavior was similar to the behavior of the people of Pharaoh and of those before them. They rejected the signs and revelations of Allah, so Allah punished them for their sins. Indeed, Allah is all-strong, severe in punishment. That is so because Allah will never change a grace which He has bestowed on a people until they change what is in themselves. And indeed, Allah is all-hearer, all-knower. Their behavior was similar to the behavior of the people of Pharaoh and those before them. They denied the signs and revelations of their Lord, so we destroyed them for their sins. And we drowned the people of Pharaoh, for they were all polytheists and wrongdoers. Indeed, the worst of living creatures before Allah are those who disbelieve, so they shall not believe. They are those with whom you made a covenant, but they break their covenant every single time, and they do not fear Allah. So if you gain mastery over them in war, punish them severely, in order to disperse those who are behind them, so that they may learn a lesson. If you, O Muhammad, fear treachery from any people, throw back their covenant to them, so as to be on equal terms, that there will be no more covenant between you and them. Certainly, Allah does not like the treacherous. And let not those who disbelieve think that they can escape from the punishment. Indeed, they will never be able to save themselves from Allah's punishment. And make ready against them all the power you can muster, including steeds of war, to threaten the enemy of Allah and your enemy, and others besides whom you may not know, but whom Allah does know. And whatever you shall spend in the cause of Allah shall be repaid to you, and you shall not be treated unjustly. But if they incline to peace, you should also incline to it and put your trust in Allah. Indeed, He is the All-Hearer, the All-Knower. And if they intend to deceive you, then indeed, Allah is all-sufficient for you. It is He who has supported you with His help and with the believers. And He has united the believers' hearts. If you had spent all that is in the earth, you could not have united their hearts, but Allah has united them. Certainly, He is Almighty, all wise. O oh, Prophet Muhammad, Allah is sufficient for you and for the believers who follow you. O oh, Prophet Muhammad, urge the believers to fight. If there are twenty steadfast persons amongst you, they will overcome two hundred. 
and if there be a hundred steadfast persons, they will overcome a thousand of those who disbelieve, because the disbelievers are people who do not understand. Now Allah has lightened your task, for He knows that there is a weakness in you. So if there are of you a hundred steadfast persons, they shall overcome two hundred, and if there are a thousand of you, they shall overcome two thousand with the leave of Allah. And Allah is with those who are patient. It is not for a prophet that he should have prisoners of war and free them with ransom until he have made a great slaughter among his enemies in the land. You desire the good of this world for the money of ransom for freeing the captives, but Allah desires for you the good of the hereafter, and Allah is almighty, all-wise. Were it not a previous ordainment from Allah, a severe torment would have touched you for what you took. So enjoy what you have gotten of booty and war, lawful and good, and be afraid of Allah. Certainly, Allah is oft forgiving, most merciful. O Prophet, say to the captives that are in your hands, If Allah knows any good in your hearts, He will give you something better than what has been taken from you and He will forgive you, and Allah is oft forgiving most merciful. But if they intend to betray you, O Muhammad, they have already betrayed Allah before. So He gave you power over them, and Allah is all-knower, all-wise. Indeed, those who believed, and emigrated, and strove hard, and fought with their property and their lives in the cause of Allah, as well as those who gave them asylum and help, these are all allies to one another. And as to those who believed, but did not emigrate to you, O Muhammad, you owe no duty of protection to them until they emigrate. But if they seek your help in religion, it is your duty to help them, except against a people with whom you have a treaty of mutual alliance. And Allah is the all-seer of what you do. And those who disbelieve are allies to one another, and if you do not follow the commandments, there will be wars, battles, polytheism, and oppression on earth, and a great mischief and corruption. And those who believed, and emigrated and strove hard in the cause of Allah, as well as those who gave them asylum and aid, these are the believers in truth. For them is forgiveness and a generous provision in paradise. And those who believed afterwards, and emigrated and strove hard along with you in the cause of Allah, they are of you. Those of you who are related to each other shall be the first to support each other in accordance with Allah's commandments. Indeed, Allah is the all-knower, 